Hey, so um, I'm recording this tutorial for people who are going to be testing out the new mapping patch, which does 3D mapping from um, a physical a mesh of a physical scene, and we discover how that corresponds to the point of view from the projector, how the um, how the view from the projector corresponds to the world which the object exists. Um, so what we want to do is um, we want to first get a model of the thing we're looking at. So we're going to use Reconstruct Me and that's going to take a scan of this scene. And then the second thing we're going to do is go into V4, use this patch, make the correlations and then look at the, the output. And I'm, I'm trying out like a new recording system here. Um, so it could also be quite low frame rate or a bit jittery. Um, I might not use this for the final ones, but anyway. So there's a few new things. So this is actually, you're looking at a V4 uh, screenshot at the moment. If I just uh, can bring V4 back. Um, you're looking at the um, this renderer here. That's being screenshot and uh, drawn out and I've overlaid a few things on top like my keyboard commands, uh, my mouse, so forth. Um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to start with reconstruct me, and you can basically get reconstruct me from if you just go to like reconstructme.net, and then um, you can just uh, just check out and download, and then you download it from here. So you click on this one, and then um, and then you, you'll basically get it like um, as a folder like this. And inside the bin folder, there'll be a whole bunch of stuff. And what we're going to do is we just use um, one of these batch files. And these batch files start the executable here, but with some startup options. So I'm going to choose high res open NI. Hit run on that. You can't use this application for commercial purposes. So it asks you to admit that when you start it. You hit Y, it's saying yes, I'm, I'm not going to use this for commercial purposes. And I'm going to use my um, oh, going to use my open and eye camera. Now, obviously, quite a lot of stuff's going on in my computer at the moment. It might be quite slow, but what I've got is um, the reconstruct me window here, my open and eye camera, and I've got like a little scene over here which um, I'm pointing a projector towards. So the way I usually set this up, if I just get this out of the way. Is I put my camera so it's like level with the um, scene, so I haven't got any roll like this. And then I put it like about one meter away, and then you have to press P to start. And then it should start capturing. Yeah, there we go. Like I said, there's quite a lot of stuff going on in my computer, so it might be a bit slow. In fact, it's so slow it's broken. Okay, for, for this part, I'm just going to quit V4 and try this again. So, uh, save content, no. Um, okay, just close V4. Bring this out full screen. Oh, it's full screen. Right, and then you, you should still be able to see my second monitor. So start reconstruct me. Do you agree? Yes. Testing open eye. Okay, and then I'll kick up a window. For me, this always seems to come up on the wrong screen. So there you go, I'll just put it here. I'm just going to move it into my, where my default window was. And again, like I said, I'm going to level it up. So no roll, about a meter away, and then press P to start capturing, and that's much better this time. And I'm just going to move it around a little bit. And I'm not going to capture too much because um, otherwise V4 is going to run really slow. But I just move it around a bit, and then that's going to fill in a lot of data from up. basically from this side, from this point of view. Now. Um, obviously, I can keep on moving around and I'll get loads of data from around the back, but that's not much use. 
to me because um, I'm going to be projecting from one side. So after you press P, you just press Escape, and then it'll say Save Content, and you do Yes. Now, for here, you choose a file name, um, and the, the extension of the file name determines the format, but you can't do a .x file. The closest we can get is a 3ds. So I'm just going to say this is shoes, um, shoes, iron cup. It's going to save that out, and then um, in the uh, in the workshop, wait a sec, I'm just trying to find this in the workshop folder. We should have maybe it's in there. Workshops, yeah. Inside here, inside um, media, right? If you um, if you just drag that 3ds file into the media folder from the reconstruct me folder then you'll have it there and then you can just drag it again onto this com 3ds and then this thing will take a little while but this will convert the the 3ds file into an x file and it's not too big here 7 megabytes often like when you do these three construct me's you can get like 20 megabytes uh, or 50 megabytes quite easily because you just kind of move around and will keep on adding and adding more detail to the mesh. And then when that turns into an X file, you'll have something like 60 megabytes. So I'm just going to move these back over here while I start V4 again. Right. Just going to load my broadcast tools. Alright, so you should be able to see my main window, my main screen again. Just going to hide that. Alright, so sorry about that. I just, um, I just had to start on my disk space for the recording. Um, right, so I'm back in V4, and this is still converting here. Um, it does take a long while. Um, it's all single threaded, I'm pretty sure. So you can see, like, here in my task manager. Com3ds using one CPU, jumping away, and V4 is using pretty much one CPU as well. Um, and that's for all this kind of capturing and so forth. Right. So while that's loading, I'm just going to load up the um, the projector node patch. Okay, I get this error. I think you shouldn't on yours. Um, it's something in the core of V4 division by zero because it thinks that like one of the links hasn't anyway it doesn't matter um, you shouldn't have that if you do you just hit OK and hide right so this is the interface um, I've um, put up here a, a one patch on the right hand side so basically down this right hand side we've got um, we've got uh, this table here which is like a view of all the data and then we've got over here um, on the top left we've got the world view and then down here on the bottom left we've got the view which comes out of the projector and you'll notice that the, um, the titles on the renderers are world and projection and this world view is what we use to kind of um, control the, uh, the control points to, to choose the control points of the source of, of, where, um, of where the points are on the object and also to kind of like just get a general like control over what's going on and, and, and see what's going on. Whereas the, the projection output is really what we want to come out of our projector. So in this example, um, just to kind of like, uh, I'm not going to bother doing this with the, um, the X-File just at the start. I'm going to do this with the soft cube. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear this. And that clears this table down here. So um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see my mouse cursor in the final one, but this table down here, um, that's where um, th that's where uh, that's where all the uh, all the data is, all the correlations. So our correlations are world x y z to projection x y, and you can change the name of the table. Just right click up here. I'm just going to do world x, world y, world z, proj x, proj y. Um, and it's basically the this table node acts like a database. So um, if you um, if you want to like deal with some spreads and you want to do things like set and hold, 
and you want to save it and you want to insert things into it and you want to go back and edit things and you want to have like some user controls over it and you want to do all these things but you don't have to like do loads of patching with sample and holds and queues and all this lot because you want to do all of them at once and they don't really kind of work for each other some kind of internal thing that's going on then this is a really good node this table thing and we've just made it for this tutorial basically and it generates an asset called a spread table so underneath here we're getting an asset called a spread table and this spread table can can go to a number of different nodes um, and if you look in the node browser you basically you generate a table with this thing table and then you use table view if you want to get a view of the data in the table which is what what's going on here and this also like lets you manipulate information so I can actually type things in here and it's gonna actually make that thing in the spread so if I choose like one 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 I should be able to see that somewhere in my thing I should be able to anyway. um, and I can also like click on something right click drag up and down now I'll change the value I can select multiple at the same time right click drag up and down so this means it's kind of like an IO box this bit but also like the data is also affecting everywhere else so where I've got like an as value down here which is where the, the data actually finally comes out so from this as value um, that's just kind of converting this table into spreads all the time and that's kind of like means that I've got a very neat way of being able to like take this table type and then do whatever I want with it wherever so sometimes I can get data out of it sometimes I can edit data like down here I'm actually got a little control to remove rows from it and inside these two I've got controls to kind of uh, inside this one I'm adding rows to it setting the world XYZ positions and in this one I'm setting the XY positions of the same row but um, where relevant okay so you might want to look at that, you might just want to kind of like anyway get this working and also you might just not care, you might want to make your own interface later on but so for the time being um, I'm just going to show you you create a point on here just by clicking and then once, you, once you've once you made the first point any mouse button you do from then on will move that point and this is running quite slow because I've got lots of stuff going on on my computer but this does run pretty fast when you're not capturing and capturing twice right so um, you see like I've added the row the, the row gets added down here so uh, when I first click down I get this world XYZ values right okay and then if I want to add a new row I put my cursor over somewhere on the model and I press enter and if I want to do that again I can just press return again return again I'm just going to zoom in down here just to get a better view and then we can do it again Return, return, and if I press return over here, it's gonna just kind of, it's gonna think it's made a new point, but it's not gonna make a new point because you can't make a new point because you're not pointing at anything. So if you um, if your cursor's over there, it might be confusing. So now I've got enough points to define a mapping, but they're all kind of like screwed up down here in in this projector window. So you kind of see that like they're all in the middle, and it's kind of trying to fit a, a cube to it. Um, so I'm just going to show you that all again. If I delete all these, um, this should have success equals false. I'm just going to do that manually. Um, and then what I can do is I can move the uh, move it in roughly so the the soft image camera is roughly the right mapping. So whatever comes out here, which is you really want to drag this window out onto your projector. Sorry, I should have said that before. This is um, this is what's going to come out of your projector. This is what you do the calibration with, and it's also kind of the result of the mapping. Right, so you drag this out onto your projector, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it on the screen. Um, so here, you, you move this around until like the output lines up roughly with the object. So like, say your projector's up here, and then you can start adding these points. And it should actually um, add them in projection space based on this view. But right now, it's just not doing that. I'm not sure why not. It isn't, but I can show you how to reset it manually. So tab and shift and tab move through these rows. As long as your keyboard here is being active, your keyboard at the top, oh, you can't see it. There you go. Keyboard there. Um, so up here we've got, um, 
we've got basically all the keyboard controls and is a keyboard system window so you have to have a window selected in order for anything to come out of here right so if I do tab now nothing's going to happen if I select up here and do tab then stuff's going to happen and I can change select which points it's selected right now if I press uh, return remember put my cursor over here and press return that's a new point if I press space it resets that point in projection space. So down here, it resets in projection space. So I'm just going to go through and do those manually because um, I didn't seem to do it the first time. Right. And as you can see now, I've actually got something that looks a bit like my input. And if I move around these points, so to move it around, you, you, you've got the same point selected in both spaces. And then you just put your cursor over the projection and drag around. It'll change the mapping. And I'm just going to reconnect this successor. Oop. Yeah, there you go. And you can see like the, the mapping's moving as I do that. So if I move one, I can particularly change the perspective. If it's much more like orth uh, orthogonal type projection or a, a parallel type projection, my camera should move further away. And you'll see it in the world view, you can see actually like this is what the projector is is if this view exists then that's what the projector the projector's view is looking like so if i if i bring them in so they're all um orthogonal they're all kind of like it's all like very square so i'll go back to zero shift and tab goes back through the list so now it's like a really long square so now i've got like a really weird long parallel projection and you can see that in the camera at the top Right, that's pretty much it. I mean, that that data gets fed into this magic node here called Calibrate Projector, and that takes in the world x, y, z's, and it gives out the and the projection x, y's, and it uses those correlations um, with an OpenCV function called Calibrate Camera. I'll just delete this. And using the, the correlations, um, it outputs a bunch of things, which are called intrinsics and extrinsics, and kind of for convenience. I've output them as view and projection as well. Now the problem with the projection is that it's in an um, OpenCV coordinates, which is in uh, it's in pixel coordinates. So it then converts it with these um, with this bit here. So it multiplies it by the camera coords view, which kind of convert is a kind of module for converting between um, camera coordinate views, OpenCV, and normalized coordinates, which is V4, and does the scale because things are upside down in, in open open CV's world and also it does apply near and far because you need a near and far plane to actually render anything so you can like the same way that in the, you have a near and far plane on a perspective node you can accept the near and far plane on the calibrate projector node and then it gives you these two transforms at the bottom projection and view which is exactly what you want basically and then you just stick those onto your renderer and you're working so all of it is basically about this node. Um, you have to hit solve for it to change because it can be quite a heavy calculation to do if there's a lot of points. It doesn't by default whenever it changes the input solve because sometimes like when you're using restricted light or or you're uh, um, you're doing like loads of points which you've gathered with chess boards and things like this, then you don't want it to solve all the time. So it's kind of a, it's a manual control there at the moment in this patch. Whenever anything changes, it's automatically hit and solve. Right, okay, so now our shoes and um, so forth will be converted. So I'm just going to go in to the workshops folder, into that media folder. Yeah, shoes iron cut. I've got it there. You missed that because V4 was paused. Oh, and it does, the whole screen will just pause for a second now because V4 takes a while to load these really heavy meshes. It has to load it twice as well. It has to load it once into the um, into the uh, whoop. yeah, that's really big. Uh, once into the uh, into the graphics card for the uh, um, for the rendering, and the other time it has to load it into the intersect node because you need to be able to intersect with it. Now, when you load things from Reconstruct Me, the units are in millimeters. So I use up here. You can see like near the top here, scale. I set that to 0.001 so then I convert my millimeters down into meters and 
the rotation if you start off like I said before with your camera horizontal facing into the scene then you need a rotation of minus 0.25 here and then you just translate it in right okay and then we can do the same thing as before um, I'm going to actually uh, hmm, I don't know if we won't be able to see this but it's a shame Sure how happy V4 is right now. Yeah, okay. I'm back. I'm going to pull that back over. It's quite a heavy mesh, and I'm sending stuff to three different devices. So, just to um, do the end of this, I'm going to do the same thing again, but with my shoes and my my iron, you can see the scan, it's quite beautiful, I'm missing off the stuff in the back, it's really beautifully detailed, really smooth down here, and you get like, you know, like, if I even go inside the shoe sometimes, it's pretty weird, I know you shouldn't be able to do that, but you can kind of, uh, no, you can't do it now, but if you kind of look through from the other side and do like a really detailed scan, then you can go inside the shoe. Right, okay, so I'm going to choose some points, so I'm going to choose one there, one here, you just have to make sure that you're choosing points that are both visible um, in the scan and visible to the projector. I'm just going to choose this many. Right, and then um, because at the moment they're all fucked, I'm just going to go back and reset them all. Oh yeah, another thing is like if you press return to make a point, it'll use the um, It'll use the uh, whatever's view transform is currently set, so that could I, on the bottom view, so that could either be the calibration or it could be the original camera, depending on whether or not you've got a, a full calibration yet. And if you don't want to use that when you press space to reset, when you press enter to make a new one, you press shift and space or shift and enter, and that's just down here. There's like a little switch. You can see it like in. Um, oh, where is it? Where's my finger? This optical flow thing isn't working very well. Uh, yeah, down here. I mean, it's basically it's a switch view and projection. And if it's um, if you basically got success on your calibration, then it'll start using the, it'll start using the other thing. Right. Okay. So um, whoop, I'm just hidden everything. Where's my patch? Uh, projector node. Right. So I've tried to those points, and then this is coming out of my projector, and I can do the same thing. I can warp this around. The thing is, like, if you're if you're choosing something that's like physically impossible, then you're in trouble. So um, it can be quite unstable if, like, if you're um, if you're choosing like a physically impossible calibration, or if you're choosing like really bad points. I'm just gonna move that third point and see what happens if it's down here. So anyway, I'm going to now calibrate this onto my shoes, and I'll finish this tutorial. Good luck, guys. I'll see you later.